One of my favorite tricks, deck of playing cards. Just touch any card in the deck. The four. I'm going to take the four, place it back in the deck, and the card you touched was the four of clubs. clubs. I hit the deck like that. Look what happens. All the cards change blank. Everyone is blank except for the backs and except for your card, the four clubs, the only card left. Now, your card has a blue back. We'll lay it down here. The rest are all blank. Examine the cards. Look at them. Feel them. Touch them. You'll find out they're nothing but blank cards. Blank. Now, all the cards are blank except for the backs. Is that right? What's the color of the back of your card there? Blue. Turn it over and look at it. What's strange about it, all the faces are gone, you see? The faces are all gone. If you turn over that deck now, you notice the backs are gone. Now we have no backs, no faces. A deck like this is no good. You can't play cards. So we place the four on top. And when you want the back, you just tap it, and then you got the back back. If you don't want the back, you make it blank. If you want the rest of the cards, you cut the deck. you got all your faces back, all the faces back, and, of course, you got all your backs back, and you're right back where you started from. That good? Yeah, it was, well, I was about eight years old when I started doing magic. I saw a woman magician in school, and I started buying magic tricks in the stores around my house, which was around uh, Diversity and uh, Clark Street area and Lincoln Park. And I saw this woman magician. I started buying tricks in a little magic shop that was on Clark Street there. And then I went into the bigger magic shops, and from the age 16, I never had a job outside of performing magic and side shows and then into nightclubs. I worked in Cicero when Cicero was wide open with gambling and stuff and worked at the Magic Lounge doing magic and sleight of hand and three shows a night. Then from there I went into a, a place called the Beacon Inn on the south side of Chicago, performed magic there and doing hypnosis, started hypnosis there. Then after that I got drafted, went to the Army and started doing magic and they saw me and they put me in special services. So I was in special services for the two years I was in the Army performing that. that. So it was, I enjoyed being in the Army because I was entertaining. I was performing and got to entertain a lot of troops and it was fun. I, I, feel, I feel blessed. I feel lucky because I was never out of a job outside of performing or producing magic and, and, and that's all I did. And then when I went on the Bozo show, as a magician, they used to have different acts on every day. They liked the way I worked, so they put me on one year seven times as Marshall Brodeen throughout the year. And I did a show for the American Gas Association and a couple other companies. They put me in that wizard outfit, and they gave it to me. So I told the producer, Don Sandberg, of the Bozo show, I got this wizard costume. Why don't I wear it sometime? And he said, let's try it. So I put it on. And he said, why don't you put a mustache and a beard and uh, darken your eyes? And when I got out there, I just played the straight wizard. And for some reason, I start rolling my eyes. And he said, hey, I like that. Keep that rolling your eyes on. And then I start going, I don't know why. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Hey, keep that in, too. And then he just get crazy. So after I did that, going on once a week, I went into two days a week, three days a week. And then, like, if someone was sick for five months, like Bozo, when Bozo was sick for uh, six months, and I was on five days a week. And then they kept me on there for 26 years, just a few days a week and performing. And it was fun because you become a different person, you get crazy, and when you walk away, no one knows who you are. In fact, people used to, that didn't know I was a wizard, would come up to me and say, you know that weird guy that's on there doing a wizard? And I say, yeah, he does magic. Man, what, what is he on? And I <laughs> I don't think he's on anything. And then later on, I'd meet him and he'd say, are you whistling? And I'd say, yeah, you never told me. Man, you're crazy, you know, and stuff like that. And it was fun to be playing that part. Mama and Papa Rabbit. This is the Papa you can tell because of the whiskers. I'm going to hold the Mama. You hold the Papa real tight. I want you to say, Papa, go to Mama. Papa, go to Mama. Watch. Open your hand. You've got Papa and Mama. I want you to hold Papa and Mama real tight. You know what rabbits are famous for, don't you? Open your hand. They multiply. Okay. okay. We use a cup. Set the cup there like that. Take out any card in the deck. It doesn't matter what card you take. All the way through the deck. Don't let me see it. Say the word stop any place at all and I'll drop it in. Right there. Remember your card? Watch. Think of your card and magically watch what happens. La da 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 And there's your card. What was it? Six, Six o'clock. Isn't that amazing?